back my friends and in today's video we're gonna do a little thrifting in Copenhagen and a little painting and we're gonna make a very plain box into something completely fabulous. <music> on the metro and then went riding around in search of a lopa market. Lopa market directly translates to flea market but it's kind of the universal term in Denmark that's used for yard sale, garage sale, sometimes even a junk store. I didn't find anything at the first outdoor lopa so we got on our bikes and rode over to Den Blohel which translates to the Blue Hall. And it is a great indoor lopa with a lot of stuff and a lot of rooms. Nothing had prices, but everything ended up being pretty cheap and I did score a couple good things. A couple days later, I hopped on my bike and I rode over to my favorite thrift store, which is the Red Cross Mega Store, and a new thrift store that I found. Thrift stores are called Genbrug, which translates to recycling, so I can't really tell if it's a thrift store or recycling center. I don't really know what it is, but I just know that anytime I see the word Genbrug, I'm gonna stop. So I scored this awesome big box at the Red Cross store and those awesome handles at the other thrift store and together it was about 20 bucks. After giving the box a thorough cleaning, the first thing I did was use DIY paint in the color Old School to paint the box both the inside and the outside. If you enjoyed this or any of my videos, please go ahead and hit that like button because YouTube really likes that. And if you're feeling particularly crazy, go ahead and hit the subscribe button too. Using DIY paint in the color French Millinery, I applied it rather thickly and then I used my offset palette knife to smoosh the paint around. And what I'm doing is I'm just creating lots of texture and layers and I want that paint to be thick and you'll see why in a minute. So I did the same thing with thick paint and my palette knife with the tarnished pearl, making sure not to mix the two colors entirely. I want places where I see French millinery, places where I still see tarnished pearl. Immediately after applying the paint so that the paint is still wet, I used my decorative art roller from Artistic Painting Studio to roll through and create an impression in the paint. Using a round flat top brush and just a little hint of paint on that brush, I am adding a stencil in Bohemian Blue. I wanted to give my stencil a little bit more dimension and kind of a drop shadow look, so I laid the stencil back down where I originally had it and just shifted it over a little bit and then re-stenciled using the copper patina, the DIY paint, pennies from heaven. To purchase any of the products that I used in this video today, click on the link in the description box below or go visit your local DIY paint retailer. paint I had left on that stencil brush and I'm dry brushing the bottom portion of my box. So it's got a little bit of bohemian blue and a little bit of the copper patina and then I'm going to go back and just add some more bohemian blue. The key with the dry brushing is to work it up in layers. Don't expect to get a wow factor on your first pass. You have to keep going back and keep adding color and that's what gives your finish a lot of depth and dimension. color 
that I chose to add to my project is Farm Fresh. Farm Fresh and Copper Patina, it's like they were made to go together. So first I dry brushed right over the stencil along the top part of my project in the Farm Fresh. Then I used my finger to add a little bit more paint and I'm gonna spray it with water and it kind of creates this color wash effect right over that stencil to soften that up. one of those things you guys there is no right way or wrong way to do this heck I don't even know what I'm doing I don't even know what I'm doing half the time it's just about adding paint and water and using my fingers until I create something that I really like if I could impart any wisdom to you at all it is just to go for it because it's just paint don't think too hard about it. Don't overanalyze it. Just go for it. Just do what you think feels and looks good. If you don't like it, you can always just paint over it. I went ahead and put those thrifted copper handles on at this point in the project because I knew that I wanted to add just a little bit of detailing around where the handles met the box. Because I'm crazy and can't leave well enough alone, I decided to add just a little bit of that same technique that I did on the top outside of the box onto the top inside of the box. I sealed the inside of the box with two quick coats of DIY paint Big Top, and then I used clear wax for the outside of the box. I absolutely could have used Big Top to seal the entire thing, but I really love the way the wax pulls a finish together, especially a finish like this that has so much depth and dimension to it. I really like the way wax works, and I really like using the colored waxes. I love having these little jewelry box feet on hand because they're great for not just jewelry boxes, but other projects as well. I get mine from Amazon and I'll put the link in the description box below. Here's a bonus pro tip for you. If you are using new screws, like the ones I'm using to attach these little feet or the screws that I used to attach the handles, paint them. Paint them so that they don't stick out and nobody knows that they are new screws. to hit that like button down below if you have learned something new today or even if you haven't learned something new today and if you have any questions on this project or any other project that I've done leave a comment and I will get back to you and make sure that I answer your question thanks so much for watching you guys I'll see you next time happy painting bye